In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at analysis of trusses and frames, wherein we will learn about trusses and their applications. We will also learn about the assumptions made in the analysis of trusses and then analysis of trusses by method of joints. Previously, we have learned about the equilibrium of a single rigid body or a system of connected members treated as a single rigid body. We first drew a free body diagram of the body showing all the forces external to the isolated body and then we applied the conditions of equilibrium. In this chapter we will be using the equilibrium conditions for the determination of forces internal to a structure that is forces of action and reaction between the connected members. An engineering structure is a connected system of members built to support or transfer forces and safely withstand the loads applied to it. In this chapter we analyze some types of structures namely trusses and frames. The truss is one of the major types of engineering structures. It provides both a practical and economical solution to many engineering problems, especially in the design of bridges and buildings. A truss consists of thin slender members which are pinned, connected at the ends thus forming a joint. The loads act only on the joints and not on the members. The following are the basic types of trusses. The planar truss is simply a two-dimensional truss which lies in a single plane. A space frame truss is simply a three-dimensional truss. Actual structures are made of several two-dimensional trusses joined together to form a space frame as shown. In our course, we will only be dealing with two-dimensional, that is, planar trusses. The following are the main applications of trusses. Roof truss is one of the most common and widely used applications of truss. Such a truss is designed to carry the load of a roof at its top. The roof over a railway platform is usually supported on a truss, and even the roof of a stadium is supported on a truss. A bridge truss is used to support the floor of the bridge. There are different types of bridges where bridge trusses are used. Railway and road bridges are usually bridge trusses. The electrical transmission towers are also a widespread application of trusses. An electrical transmission tower is simply a vertical steel truss. Such a truss carries the load and tension of the heavy electrical cables supported on them. The microwave transmission towers are also an important application of trusses. A microwave transmission tower is simply a vertical steel truss. Such a truss carries the load of the heavy parabolic antennas. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Consider the truss shown if the loads acting on the joint are high in magnitude. There is a chance of permanent deformation of the members. Hence, causing failure of the truss. In order to prevent such a scenario, we need to find all the member forces of the truss. This process is called as analysis of trusses. The complete analysis of a truss primarily involves two steps. Calculation of the support reactions and then finding the actual forces in all the members of the truss. The nature of actual forces, that is tensile or compressive, is also to be found. Before we study the methods used for analysis of trusses, we should first learn the assumptions on which the analysis would be based. All the members of the truss lie in a single plane, thus together forming a planar truss. All the loads acting on the truss lie in the plane of the truss. The members of the truss are joined at the ends by internal hinges known as pins. Loads act only at the joints and not directly on the members. All the members of the truss are two force bodies and therefore resulting in actual forces which are tensile or compressive in nature. As the self weight of the members is very small in comparison to the loads, the self weight of the members is neglected. The truss is statically determinate, that is, all the forces can be determined using the conditions of equilibrium. There are two methods primarily used for analyzing truss analytically, method of joints 
and method of sections. In this video, we will learn the method of joints to analyze trusses. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Method of joints. As the name suggests, in this method, we will isolate the joints from the parent truss and then apply conditions of equilibrium to the individual joints. The principle if the truss is in equilibrium, an isolated joint of the truss will also be in equilibrium is used in this method. The following steps are followed while analyzing a truss using method of joints. Step 1. We will first apply conditions of equilibrium to the entire truss to calculate reactions at all the supports. Step 2. Select a joint from the truss which only has two members with unknown forces. Isolate the selected joint from the truss and draw its free body diagram. We select joints with only two unknown members as only two conditions of the equilibrium can be applied to analyze a joint. Step 3. Assume that the members carry only tensile forces. Based on this assumption, show the arrows on the unknown member forces pointing away from the joint. Step 4. The forces at the joint form a concurrent force system to which we can only apply two conditions of equilibrium. Sum of all forces in x direction is zero. Sum of all forces in y direction is zero. By using the above conditions, we will find the unknown member forces at the joint. If any value calculated is found to be negative, it implies that the assumption was incorrect and that the particular member carries compressive force and not tensile force. Step 5. Mark the magnitude and nature of the forces calculated on the parent truss. Then, select and isolate another joint having only two members with unknown forces. Kindly note that we will repeat steps 2 to 5 solving joint after joint in this process in order to find forces in all members of the truss. Step 6. Present the results in a tabular form indicating the member the magnitude of the force acting on it and the nature of the force. The following problem will be helpful to understand the concept behind analysis of a truss by method of joints. The way we isolate the joints, show the forces of the members and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the joint to calculate the forces in all the members of the truss. Using the method of joints, analyze the truss shown. This is a simple truss and we have to find forces in all the members of the truss using method of joints. We will first find the support reactions. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the entire truss. We will first equate the summation of moments of all forces about point A to 0. On simplifying, we get the normal reaction about point F to be 8.25 kN. Then we will equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to 0. Thus, we will find horizontal component of the reaction at support A to be equal to 5 kN. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to 0. Thus, we find the magnitude of vertical reactions offered by support A is equal to 7.75 kN. We will first isolate joint A as there are only two unknown members A, B and A, C. We will initially assume the members to be in tension. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint A. We will first equate the summation of all forces in y direction to 0. Thus, we will find the force in member AB as 10.61 kN and tensile in nature. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to 0. Thus, we find that the force in member AC is equal to 12.5 kN, but compressive in nature. Next, we will isolate joint B as there are only two unknown members BD and BC. We will initially assume the members to be in tension. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint B. We will first equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find force in the member BD to be equal to 12.5 kN and tensile in nature. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. Thus, we find that the force in member BC is 7.5 kN, but compressive in nature. Now, 
we will isolate joint C as the joint has two unknown members CE and CD. We will initially assume the members to be in tension. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint C. We will first equate the summation of all forces in y direction to zero. Thus we will be able to find the force in the member CD to be equal to 5.6 kN but compressive in nature. Then we equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus we find that the force in member CE is 8.02 kN but compressive in nature. Next we will isolate joint E as the joint has two unknown members EF and ED. We will initially assume the members are to be in tension. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint E. We will first equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus we will be able to find force in the member EF to be equal to 8.02 kN but compressive in nature. Then we equate the summation of all forces in y direction to zero. Thus we find the force in member ED is 6 kN but compressive in nature. Now isolate joint F as the joint has only one unknown member DF. We will initially assume the member to be in tension. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to joint F. We will first equate the summation of all forces in x direction to zero. Thus we will be able to find force in the member DF to be equal to 11.34 kilo newtons and tensile in nature. Thus we have found forces in all the members of the truss. We will finally tabulate the results as shown. The table indicates the member, the magnitude of the force acting on it and the nature of the force. Thus we analyze the given truss using method of joints. Let's take a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. A truss consists of thin slender members which are pin connected at the ends thus forming a joint. The loads act only on the joints and not on the members. We also learned about the basic type of trusses. The planar truss is simply a two dimensional truss which lies in a single plane. A space frame truss is simply a three dimensional truss. Actual structures are made of several two dimensional trusses joined together to form a space frame as shown. Then we learned about the various applications of trusses namely roof truss, bridge truss, electrical transmission towers and microwave transmission towers. A roof truss is designed to carry the load of a roof at its top. A bridge truss is used to support the floor of the bridge. Trusses used in an electrical transmission tower carry the load and tension of the heavy electrical cable supported on them. In microwave transmission towers, trusses carry the load of the heavy parabolic antennas. Next, we learned about the analysis of trusses. The complete analysis of a truss primarily involves two steps. Calculation of the support reactions and then finding the actual forces in all the members of the truss. Before we study the methods used for analysis of trusses, we should first learn the assumptions on which the analysis would be based. The following assumptions are used to analyze a truss. There are two methods primarily used for analyzing truss analytically, method of joints and method of sections. Then we learn the method to analyze a truss by using the method of joints. As the name suggests, in this method we learn to isolate the joints from the parent truss and then apply conditions of equilibrium to the individual joints. The following steps were followed while analyzing a truss using method of joints. In the end, the results are represented in a tabular form indicating the member, the magnitude of the force acting on it and the nature of force.